In today's video, we're going to fuse two books together on this journey to bringing forth our vision. Whether it be an entrepreneurial vision, a career vision, any kind of goal or project that you want to see into completion. Perhaps you're an artist or deeply involved with the sciences. The concepts contained within this video in relation to these two books can help you bring forth a higher degree of integration of what we've been discussing even further building upon the other two videos that I did on flow, which I'll link in the description and making progress to realizing your vision. So deep work is looked at as activities performed in an ideal state of distraction free concentration. Now this could be certain tasks that you're working on projects, or for example, cultivating a skill. I work with many who, want to develop their public speaking skills because they have found that they have some unique insights and perspectives to share with others in which they would like to share it on social media or perhaps do some live events to be able to teach others the insights that they have gained in certain areas of their life, their expertise. So deep work can be looked at as those moments where you practice or express in relation to public speaking. Same is to be said about any task or project. It's essentially distraction free concentration. Now what this does is elevates our flow, brings us into a deeper degree of flow. There's different levels of flow. There's more of a deep flow that someone might experience. Let's say if they were surfing or snowboarding or speaking publicly at a live event. And then there's lighter flow, which we tend to experience perhaps when we do some light task flow is essentially where challenge meets skill. And what we want to do is transcend our perspective on challenge. What we want to do is actually embrace challenge because what we find is we further develop our skills our capabilities, which then translates over to innovation, better marketing, better selling. I always recommend focusing as far as entrepreneurship goes on marketing, selling and innovation. Marketing is the ability to put out a message that brings awareness onto your product or service or your message. Selling is your ability to communicate effectively during a presentation or a one on one dialogue with an individual or a group of individuals to help bridge the connection between the product and service and the benefits that they are going to receive as a result of utilizing your product or service through the conversation. So this is a skill. We develop ideal capabilities and skills during deep work. We also find, and in relation to our last video, a deep level of engagement, symbolic significance with the task at hand, which stimulates certain insights and perspectives that could be expressed in our marketing, selling, or our innovation. Innovation can be looked at optimal ways of optimizing our business, finding ways to express our information in a distinct way that facilitates the value over to the client, as well as innovation for new products or services. And there are many different forms of innovation that are brought forth as a result of engaging yourself with deep work. So two important aspects that he discussed in the book, deep work is number one, the ability to quickly master challenges. So I'm a fan of engaging with the challenge because what I find is through the challenge of developing a skill or seeing a project all the way to completion. I develop a higher degree of understanding, experience, integration, and a deep level of understanding as to what brings me into flow and what breaks my flow so that I could adjust accordingly to maintain a higher degree of flow. Number two is the ability to produce at an elite level in terms of both quality and speed. So if you're in the entrepreneurial space, or if you're expressing from an artistic space, or you're involved with some scientific innovation, 
then we recognize the value of quality and speed. We want to be able to produce more, and we want to be able to do it with a high level of quality, knowing that we get better at it with practice. And this practice really is found in finding flow and maintaining flow during the deep work. So let's get into a discussion of the flow-based path, which I've been discussing all throughout the videos. I always suggest making flow a priority. I also, in relation, put together a couple other videos prior to this in relation to flow, and I recommend watching those videos because you'll find them to be complementary to this video. I'll put a link in the description to that. And perhaps we'll further go down this thread and create a whole series on integrating different aspects and understanding of the power of flow. Now, Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, in his book, Flow, says the following. Enjoyment is characterized by this forward movement, by a sense of novelty, of accomplishment. Playing a close game of tennis that stretches one's ability is enjoyable, as is reading a book that reveals things in a new light as is having a conversation that leads us to express ideas we didn't know we had. Now, we've been discussing this because we realize that the ideas are within ourselves. And what we want to do is stimulate these ideas. And we find stimulation as far as these ideas go when we get into and make flow a priority and maintain that flow. And we're going to do this in a very practical way by integrating flow into our deep work sessions. We'll talk about that in a moment. Because as a result, we're going to find innovative ideas. And this innovation can benefit our lives, optimize what we do, benefit the lives of others. And you could say that this is one of the core aspects and foundational realizations of entrepreneurship. The ability to take what already is there and rearrange it in a way to turn it into a product or service alongside the marketing and selling to enhance the life of others and bring forth fair compensation in exchange. Now, the important aspect of this, as we tie it into our discussions of mind, is this is happening as a result of the rearrangement of the mind. So what we're looking to do is get into a flow-based ideal state of mind and express accordingly. He says, after an enjoyable event, we know we have change, that our self has grown. In some respect, we have become more complex as a result of it. So sometimes I get asked the question, what do you value? Do you value complexity or do you value simplicity? And my response is universally that I value both. Because what I found is that complexity has brought me to simplicity. Reflect back on your journey. And what I found is Simplicity also brought forth a higher degree of understanding in relation to complexity. And as we tie this into the understanding of polarity, as we go through the book, The Kabbalion, we recognize it's important to embrace both simplicity and complexity. This brings us into a higher degree of inner peace because the entrepreneur has this ability and can further cultivate it through the process of deep work and maintaining flow to value both simplicity and complexity. And as a result of both of those aspects, we bring forth a higher degree of nuanced understanding, insights and perspectives, and ideas to help us with innovation, marketing, and selling. So the first thing we want to do is we want to have a clear goal. So in this video, we're speaking about a project or a task or something that you would like to do to develop your skill whatever it may be. It could be sitting down and putting together a video for YouTube or Instagram or creating a article in which you're going to post it on a website, a blog post, or working on your business, designing your website, and even an artistic expression like working on your painting. What you want to do is carve out time to be able to do this because we want to do this in a way where it's focus and distraction free. This means we want to set up our environment to really encourage and nurture this deep work and flow state. Now, you can fit deep work whenever you'd like into your schedule. 
Personally, for me, I've set up my week so that I'm involved with deep work all throughout the day. I've got time carved out for the deep work, such as working with clients, working on aspects of my business, putting together this content, and even dedicating time to study information in which I'm very present. And through the presence in relation to these certain areas, I'm not only able to complete the tasks, see them all the way to completion, and the projects, but I also bring forth a higher degree of insights and perspectives, which I'm then able to integrate and share on my YouTube channel, for example, with you, so that you too can benefit from this. And if you find it to be relatable, you can integrate it into your life. Now, this could be a task or project, or it could be looked at as just sequencing your tasks and working on them one at a time till completion in, for example, 25-minute chunks. You can do something like 25 minutes of dedicated time on your project, followed by a five-minute break, and then another 25 minutes and a five-minute break, and do this four times. We also refer to this as the Pomodoro Method. Or you could also do 50-minute work chunks. For me, I prefer to just stick with a task or project and see it all the way to completion and plan it accordingly because I have a general idea of how long it's going to take me to do things. And for example, when I'm working with clients, we carve out time. So it could be 30 minutes, an hour, or two hours, and we actually block it in our calendars. That way I know during that hour, I'm fully committed, there's no distractions, and I'm deeply engaged in what I'm doing. I perform the service. Also in the process, I have a notebook beside me in which I take some notes which can be beneficial for my clients as well as myself, which further contributes to the innovation and ideas that flow that can be integrated in the marketing, the selling, the innovation, and other areas of my business and life in general. So the first thing we want to do is either commit to a block of time or committing to a task or project. And or we could do this anytime or we can pre-schedule it in our calendar. Now we also want to keep point number two into consideration immediate reporting and feedback. And what I found in my journey is that immediate reporting and feedback can be looked at as qualitative indicators or quantitative indicators. Quantitative indicators could be actually measuring your progress or having metrics in place. For example, if you go to the gym, you count the amount of sets or reps that you're doing. Qualitative indicators is also something that I work with and I find it to be equally as important in relation to quantitative indicators. And that is, how do I feel when I'm doing the task or project? I want to have a certain lightheartedness and I want to maintain a certain state of mind because what I want to do is I want to do what I'm doing from a place of flow to stimulate more creativity, hunches, inspiration, to get more out of my time and my energy and my resources and the opportunity costs. So thus I observe how I feel. And I want to feel myself stepping into deeper degrees of flow. Now, this is something that you feel. For example, if you're an athlete, you might notice that you can feel these qualitative indicators after maybe five or 10 minutes of warming up or maybe a few minutes into the game. Now, if you're developing public speaking, one of the things you might notice is that a few minutes into public speaking, usually about five or 10 minutes in, you'll start to get more in flow with your presentation, and that's totally fine. One of the things that you can do is what I do before I do a public speaking event is I talk to five people. For example, when I used to do the workshops, we used to hold them at hotels in the conference rooms. What I used to do was I would talk to people in the lobby, and I would just talk about whatever, whatever they wanted to talk about, whatever was on our mind, and I would notice that I would get very present and deeply engaged and connected with people. I found then I was in flow, and that was a good qualitative indicator for me. So then when I stepped into the presentation, actually went up on stage and started the presentation, I noticed that it was a lot easier for me to express my ideas authentically. So how you feel is a very important qualitative indicator. Now you can have both, or you could have one or the other. It's important to find what works for you in relation to the task, project, or what you're working on. Number three, what we want is a harmony between challenge and skill. So when it comes to flow, what we're looking to do 
is engage in activities that challenge us, but also at the same time stimulate our current skill and real time develop our skill further. This is found by placing ourselves in challenging situations and experiences that stimulates the creativity. So rather than having an overwhelming amount of challenge, we're chunking it up to higher levels of challenge. One of the things I also want to add to this is I do place myself in certain experiences which I call control chaos. I consciously place myself in those situations that are extremely challenging and I might not be able to experience flow in it, but I will learn a lot. And so what we're focusing on here is deep work in relation to finding flow by finding a right ratio of challenge and skill. For example, let's say you found a workout program on YouTube and it's a very challenging workout routine and you feel very overwhelmed by it. What is usually suggested by individuals that put out those kind of programs is you start at a pace that works for you. So you could chunk it down and maybe do part of that routine or some variation, a lighter variation of that routine and work your way up to actually finding flow as you develop more skill via that challenge. As you follow this kind of progression, what you'll find is that you'll actually enjoy doing these activities. This is also how some have asked me, how do I put out these kinds of videos with consistency on Thursdays and Sundays? And we've been doing so now since I committed to this in 2019. That's because I didn't start from that position. I started by committing to other things that are related to public speaking, seeing it all the way to completion. And then I integrated blocking out time on my calendar. For example, I do these videos usually on Monday and Tuesday, carving out the time that allows me to show up during the moments of making these videos in which right then and there in the moment I receive the hunches and inspirations as to what to talk about, as well as go into a recording, go through the processing and all these things, all done from a place of flow and I don't feel overwhelmed by it. That's the importance of chunking up, chunking down, embracing challenge, and seeing it as an opportunity to cultivate more skill. And consider this a lifelong, deliberate journey. You place yourself in sessions of deep work. As a result, you develop a higher degree of skill. You're able to rise up to higher degrees of challenge. It's easier to maintain flow and your ideal state of mind. You accomplish a lot. You bring forth a higher degree of innovation, which can be infused in your marketing, your selling, and the products or services that you create as well as you increase your self-esteem, your self-confidence, because you see yourself committing to something and seeing it all the way to completion. You also stimulate flow, which is an ideal way of being, an ideal state of mind. And then as he says here, the work that you do becomes enjoyable, which he also further says, after an enjoyable event, we know that we have changed, that our self has grown, in some respect, we have become more complex as a result of it. You're able to then integrate a higher degree of complexity, bringing forth a higher degree of nuanced based intelligence in relation to yourself and your vision, which helps you see more potentiality. So what I recommend in our deep work sessions, as we get better at it, is to commit to projects or tasks that are a right ratio between challenge and skill so we can get engaged, make this a habit, and turn this into a way of life. As you turn this into a way of life, you're going to find that it's going to be easier to repeat this process again and again and again. You will understand yourself and represent a higher degree of self-confidence, and that self-confidence and self-understanding will be expressed through your innovation and your creative expression. Now, as we engage in our task, in our project, what we want to do is practice a higher degree of awareness. So here are some components that were discussed in the book flow that we want to be aware of to ensure that we are maintaining a deep work session from a place of flow so we can get these benefits. And you want to be aware of these things because you know you're doing this accurately when you have these experiences. Number one, actions and awareness become one. As you engage yourself in the activity, you're feeling connected with it you're noticing that distractions are easily excluded from your consciousness. While there's a lot of things that we could do, and we've been discussing many different ways 
of excluding the distractions out of consciousness so you can focus on the thoughts that are in harmony with your vision. We also find that deep work from the perspective of flow helps us automatically exclude distractions out of consciousness. There's no room in the mind for irrelevant information because we're deeply engaged in what we're doing. We also find that peace is made with thoughts of fear, doubt, and indecision. I got asked the question, is fear a limiting belief? And upon deeper reflection of my own life, I recognized that fear actually helped me move forward towards my vision many times. As the Joseph Campbell saying goes, the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. So fear has been helpful for me. There have been, however, times where my interpretations regarding the fear, as was discussed in Thinking Grow Rich, such as the fear of criticism or the fear of poverty, have caused me to enter into different states of mind, break my flow, and as a result, I experience procrastination. However, when I make flow a priority, then what I notice is I automatically do the thing if needed to do if it happens to be a fearful thing because I already know it's the thing that I want to do, such as speaking in public or in earlier stages, putting out these videos. I've been making videos since 2013. And in the earlier stages, I had fear of putting them out. Now I enjoy putting them out. And I believe that it is because of what is being discussed in this video. So it's important to then return to this video regularly as you continue this process. So you can pick up even more nuances that will further contribute to your journey as you progress towards your vision. You'll also notice time distortion, an altered perception of time. Time may seem to go fast or slow, depending on what you're doing, but this is something that I find to be very interesting that happens as a byproduct of integrating with deep work sessions from a place of flow. And you also experience what Mihai Csikszentmihalyi calls autotelic. The activity in the person becomes autotelic. Now, the term autotelic derives from two Greek words. Auto, meaning self, and telos, meaning goal. So really reflect upon that. Auto, meaning self, and telos, meaning goal. It refers to a self-contained activity. One that is done not with the expectation of some future benefit, but simply because the doing itself is the reward. You've heard me say this many times. One of the things I've realized in the journey is I value the journey and the destination. There used to be a time in my life where I would value the destination and bias towards it. This would create an unnecessary amount of attachment to the different aspects of the journey in relation to that vision. There were times in my life where I made it more about the journey. Thus, when I came across this principle of autotelic, which is something that is experienced when you're in flow, I was able to find peace of how to go about doing the things that I do each day in a way that brings forth all those things that we mentioned, like the creativity, the innovation, the productivity, the output, the yield, and the ideal state of mind and flow, which is what I want to experience. And if you find this to be helpful for you, then perhaps this information, maybe you're already doing it, or maybe you can integrate it to a deeper degree, can help you also get into the state of mind, which he calls autotelic. So again, the term autotelic derives from two Greek words, auto meaning self and telos meaning goal. And he says, an autotelic person needs few material possessions and little entertainment, comfort, power, or fame because so much of what he or she does is already rewarding. So this is where you really get deeply engaged in your deep work and you enjoy what you're doing and you don't want to be anywhere else. And you'll start to notice that even more so as you integrate this. He says, because such persons experience flow in work, in family life, when interacting with people, when eating, such as perhaps a deep work session could be deep reflection. This is something that I found is to dedicate time to just sit there and understand an inner dialogue with myself. Understand what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling, what I'm experiencing. And what this does is brings forth a higher degree of awareness, helps me make sense of things and relatability between the inner and outer. 
He says they are less dependent on the external rewards. They are more autonomous and independent because they cannot be easily manipulated with threats or rewards from the outside. At the same time, they are more involved with everything around them because they are fully immersed in the current of life. So we can look at flow as the current of life. And the deep work is our opportunity to express, to innovate, to engage, to be stimulated by what we're doing. When we start to look at the different tasks and projects and things that we would like to do from this perspective, and this is a practice, you get better at it with practice. What I found is that I got better at it as I continued to integrate this information. It still leads to the vision. And what we're doing is we're also enjoying and benefiting and innovating on the journey to the vision. We also find that rapid progress is made as a result of maintaining that state of mind that stimulates possibility-based thinking. Watch the video I did on turning impossible into possible. We'll also find that we'll actually start to enjoy situations that others don't find enjoyable. We'll find deep peace. Now, this is something that I found to be very distinct with many of the entrepreneurs that I met on the journey, they were producing a high level of success. They really found deep meaning and symbolic meaning in the different things that they were doing each day. And they would enjoy doing those things. And all those things would be in contribution to the vision. They enjoyed showing up and they enjoyed finding flow, although many of them might not have called it flow, engaging in what they're doing. And those situations became enjoyable. Also, patience and persistence, which are two important attributes, is further developed, and a positive attitude is also experienced. And this translates to having those experiences, having this kind of experience, even if there was prolonged adversity in a person's life. You could look at this as personal development in a nutshell, experiential learning. And as mentioned, the journey and destination are merged as one. And we start to understand more so what that means. So in summary, what we want to do is we want to pick a goal, a project, a task, and apply what is discussed in this video. And it could be a project you're working on, a task. It could be 25 minutes or 50 minute work chunks or whatever works for you. Fit it into your schedule somehow. Apply some qualitative and quantitative indicators to measure the progress so you can stimulate the flow. You don't have to have both. But one of these can be very helpful, or both of them, like I do. Engage in activities that you find challenging, but as you notice that you embrace the challenge, you're also developing more skill. Skill in your performance, physical, your emotional integration with it, your thinking surrounding it, your ideas, and so forth. And then you can also peripherally notice these effects here. Your action and awareness becoming one, distractions being excluded out of consciousness, time being distorted, and Understanding what is mentioned here, becoming autotelic. Now, as you experience it during these sessions, and you go on to do this again and again and again, every day, maybe two or three times a day or as much as you'd like, what you'll notice is you'll have a deeper level of peace and integration with the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. And what you'll also notice is you'll have ideas, hunches, and inspirations that will contribute to your sales, marketing, and innovation. And even if you're not necessarily directly involved with sales, marketing, and innovation, we all some way or somehow are through our artistic expressions, through our career, or through any kind of contributions we make in life. And one thing that I recommend doing regularly, perhaps at the end of the day, is cause and effect reflections in which you reflect upon if there was any flow breakers during the day, anything that broke your flow or anything that was while you were doing your deep work sessions that were breaking your flow. Reflect upon the thinking surround these flow breakers so we can change how we relate to those things and thus maintain our flow. Find the accurate meaning in relation to our vision because as we've been discussing over the weeks, our inner conversations, our inner dialogues is shaping our experience and how we relate to the different things that we do during the deep work. And we always want to change these things within ourselves. So as always stated, first start with self. We can either change how we relate to it. We can accept it the way it is. And generally, since we start with self, we start with acceptance first. 
as we're reflecting upon at the end of the day, the different flow breakers, what we want to do is take responsibility for those flow breakers and say, we are going to change those flow breakers in some shape or form. We're either going to change how we relate to it. We're going to accept it the way it is. By the way, it could be a combination of these things. Change how you relate, accept it the way it is, or change it. Now, we can go a step further if you'd like. In business, what I generally recommend to those that I work with is running it through a filter like this. With the changes to be made, you could either optimize whatever it is during your deep work session. You could perhaps delegate that to somebody else so you could do something else. Maybe you're not finding flow in it. You can automate it working with some technology or process. You can eliminate it. And these things are really in contribution to the vision. So in relation to the vision, you ask yourself. So I'll give you a very personal example. I like to be heavily involved with putting together this content. I create the mind maps. I record because I have a tech side to me, as well as I have the side that loves to create and innovate. I also have this public speaking side to me. So these are the things that I really like to do. Now, there are some things that are more administrative in relation to what I do. Those things are either delegated or automated. So I could do deep work sessions with those things. But what I found is that they're not the best leverage of my time, as well as I don't necessarily enjoy doing it. I could find enjoyment in doing it, but I don't feel like doing those things. So what I've done is I've delegated and automated those particular tasks or parts of those tasks. I also found that there was various things that I was doing over the years in my entrepreneurial journey that weren't necessarily translating into the results that I wanted. Such as, for example, I was involved with a lot of different meetings in the earlier stages. I then found that it was better for me to engage in fewer meaningful meetings rather than engaging in a lot of meetings in which I found for me, it broke my flow. So I eliminated having an excessive amount of meetings. Now, optimize could be doing the thing differently. So one of the things that I like to do with the things that I do each day is at the cause and effect reflections, I ask myself, how can I do this even better next time? And it could involve a combination in part or whole of delegation, automation, or elimination. Or I could do it a little differently. Maybe I'll do it in a different kind of format. For example, going back to what I mentioned earlier, I find that rather than calibrating to the audience for the first five or 10 minutes, if I'm doing a public speaking event, it's far more effective for me to talk to five people prior to doing the event. That's something that I discovered through the optimization. So you can see the innovation that is found through the deep work and making flow a priority. Because as you go through a process like that and engage in what you're doing from the perspective of deep work and flow, what you will notice is that you'll not only do those things, but you will come up with constant innovative ways of optimizing it even further. Thus bringing forth a lot of awareness, which allow you to focus on the flow based activities, deeply engage in them, and in the process, further cultivate and develop your capabilities, skills, and find the deeper symbolic meaning with what you're doing as a result, stimulating new ideas, hunches, inspiration to further optimize and produce even more output and yield. And what you'll find is that this continues and keeps continuing. And as a result, you'll find opportunities in areas that you might not have seen before, although they were always there. So let's go ahead and conclude this with an affirmation. You can say, I realize that I have the ability to quickly master what appears as challenge by developing my skills and my ability through the flow based pathway that is revealed in my deep work. As a result, I have a clear goal and maintain a lighthearted journey by reflecting upon my immediate reporting and feedback, harmonizing the challenges and skills to develop a higher degree of awareness and autotelic way of being that brings forth innovation, insights, and perspectives in a compounding way. As I continue to maintain this flow-based state of mind, I experience a higher degree of accomplishment. 
This is characterized by my deep enjoyment and engagement. And upon reflection of the events, I get even more insights and perspectives to integrate further, to bring me deeper into flow and develop a higher degree of ability to embrace and harmonize both simplicity and complexity. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.